Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just go ahead and take a look at app.tsx file in Next.js. So again, just like document.tsx underscore app.tsx is also a special file. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that. But it's a little bit different than document.tsx and a little bit simple as well to set up. Um, the first reason is obviously because you can go ahead and export a function directly out of it. So what should you write here? Well, let's just go ahead and try to return h1 hello from here, right? And let's just start our server. So we have a server running on port 3000. And if we reload the page, we get hello. Hmm, something's not right. If we go ahead on our index.tsx page, what we could see is that, uh, actually let's just go ahead and rename this as app so that we don't get really, don't really get that warnings. But we see that we have here on the um, index page. So, you know, I am index page and not hello. If I write that, hit save, refresh, but we still get hello. Hmm, that's strange. If I go ahead and write here, I am page one. And if I go to slash page one, we still get hello. If I go to 404, which is no page, we still get hello. So what's happening? Well, if you could guess, this app.tsx is actually responsible for rendering all of your pages, right? So when you're returning a constant component that is just a single file, what's really happening is that you are you are executing none of the pages here. So how do we execute pages? Well, Next.js actually passes two things here. The first one is component and the second one is page props. That is the props passed to the component, to this component by Next.js internally, right? And because this is rendering right now, we can just go ahead and do something like this. So we're gonna write component right here and I'm gonna just destructure these page props. Now, if we go ahead and take a look, you can see that we get the correct 404 page as well as if I go to home page, we get I am index page and not hello and everything is just working fine, right? So basically, this is the endpoint for, you know, just, just, just updating the pages in a way you want before they are rendered. Now, this is a little bit different than the actual, um, you know, the actual document.tsx page we have. <clears throat> and how is that different? I'm going to show you. Let's just write a very simple console log statement here, which says hello from underscore app, right? <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is save this and go ahead and refresh the page. So when I refresh this, you can see that in our node console, we got an event that is a console which says hello from app, right? That means that this code, this function was actually executed on the server as well, right? This is a node process. This is executed. We see this console. That means node somehow executed this, right? At the same time, if I go ahead and take a look in the console on the browser, we get hello from app here as well. That means this is executed. This component, this code is actually executed on the, on the client as well, irrespective of I am page one being on the page itself, right? So what, we are, what you're really seeing here is one of the core fundamental concepts of server-side rendering. That is the content is available as plain HTML, as well as as soon as the JavaScript of that particular page is ready, in our case, the JavaScript, which is of the component, the hooks and event listeners and everything, when they are ready, they are automatically attached to your page, right? So for example, if I have something like, you know, h1 on click, um, alert, hello, if I have something like this. Now, if I go ahead and refresh this page, you can see if I click on this, I get a hello alert. But if I go to the page source, you're going to see I get no such information inside JavaScript right here, right? It's just a regular H1. So what happens initially is that I'm displayed, I am page one. And then when the JavaScript is downloaded and rendered completely, event listeners and everything is attached to it. That is why we get an alert now, 
if I disable my JavaScript and run this, I'm still gonna see I'm page one, but there would no there would be no interactivity. So what's really happening here is that this code, this function is being executed both on the server, obviously for server-side rendering, and on the client as well. With document.tsx, what's happening is that things really execute just on the server right so if i go ahead and write here hello from document.tsx hit save you're gonna see that if i go ahead and reload this we get hello from document.tsx but we get nothing such message from on our console why because you can clearly see that document.tsx although it returns a react component although agreed that it returns a react component but it is actually forming the page structure the overall page structure right so that means it is only rendered on the server to create those html and head and you know those 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 custom nextjs scripts and hooking everything in nicely but it would not execute any JavaScript which is available inside this page right away, right? So if you have, you know, um, component did mount or anything like that, that is not really going to happen because this is not a component. This is your actual root document which is being rendered through this component file, right? So it's sort of a, uh, I don't know, it's sort of a lie as to say, that it is a component it is not a component it is your actual document which is being rendered so it won't really make a lot of sense if you have component in mount here and there right here because they are more suited toward pages toward individual pages in our case it could be index.tsx uh, where you can have a use effect which is you know once the page is ready that is once the page is mounted you can just say alert hello right or maybe you can just you know if you go back to index you're gonna get that hello right here or you can just go ahead and uh, you know just override that behavior for all the pages right here so the fundamental difference being between app.tsx and document is that this file is used to create the overall structure and the code in this file is never executed the javascript code on this file is never executed on the client side whatever you know the html string and everything which we get from this file is put as it is on the source code and it is not executed as per se on the client side end so we have some uses for app.tsx which we're going to discover as we move on but that was mostly it for this video and if you like this um, we have a lot of things coming up so just hold on so that would be all for this video i'm going to see you pretty soon in the next one